I'm Danny Lipford. And I'm Chelsea Lipford Wolf. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And be sure to share with a friend, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. This week we're helping a busy family catch up on home maintenance by sharing some home repair basics. With an older home, you, you'll have constant maintenance problems. What do you think so far? Unbelievable. This house was built in 1958, and the owners, Ted and Christine, share it with their daughter, Lauren, and two teenage sons, Ted Jr. and Trent. Like many older homes, this one is in need of several small repairs, and apparently, the boys are responsible for many of them. On the front of the house, we probably went through seven or eight windows uh, from footballs, baseballs, tennis balls. The only ball that hasn't gone through is the basketball. That's only because it's larger than the window panes. So we've seen a lot of damage from the boys through the years. We just don't have a lot of time to do some of the repairs that come up. We kept thinking we would get to these projects and uh, being busy parents, we never could. And you know, working full time, it's just kind of crazy. Yes, am I falling behind on maintenance? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the, the time we have with our children, we're still gonna try to put that time with them while they're in the home hopefully they won't be in the home forever. <laughs> <laughs> they can say they want to. In addition to the cracked window on the front porch, I also discover that much of the window glazing is damaged and several slats are missing from one of the shutters. Plus, the porch floor is mildewed, and like many older homes, the front door just doesn't seal very well. Because of Ted's work schedule, their daughter Lauren will be working with Christine and us this week. Hello there. Hi, Danny. So great to see Hi, you. Hi, good to see you as well. Welcome, Danny. Actually, you just found one of our issues. I thought that doorbell wasn't working. That should be a prerequisite of every doorbell that you have to hear it from the front door. So we can figure that out. It's just a couple of little uh, steps that we have to go through. Um, what are some awesome. of the other well, things Well, come on you in. Have? We got right, a lot sure. more. Immediately, um, the floor. That's ah, the biggest I see. issue. I see a little bit down there. Yes, that's the laminate yes. floor that has buckled due to our dog that we used to have. And as you can tell, the dog was not potty trained, to say the least. <laughs> this laminate flooring that uh, was caused by the dog, um, I'm a little leery of getting involved with it because um, I may make a situation worse by trying to tackle something where I lack a, a skill set. Big question, do you have any of the laminate floor? We, we do. do. Uh -huh, we do. Good, all right, well that was all, that's the hardest thing is finding it. Repairing it, that should be pretty easy. Awesome. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and then we have a place right here um, where the, the door opens up. Oh, it's got the a big key. key going through there. We do. Too. We leave the key in there because um, with five, you know, three kids, um, keys go missing a lot in this house. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a good idea. Well, these, this is fairly simple, and things like both of these things are, are are fun things to show you how to do if you ever have to do them again. So that's good. What else you got? Awesome. Um, yes. We also have this louver door. Ah. This little piece here was broke uh, as a result of our boys playing ball in here. Those boys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you by chance have any of the pieces left? Um, the we pieces did. Really? We did. Good, good. Okay, well, we should be able to get some good uh, wood glue on that and put all that back together. Well, these are good, and I'm sure there's a few other little things that we may find around here that we can take care of, because a lot of these things are really minor, and uh, hopefully we can get your doorbell going again, that yes. type of thing. So I'll get together with Chelsea. We'll get a few materials together to get us started, and we'll be back out here in a couple of days. Yay, right. excited. <laughs> Okay, ready to get started? Yes! Okay. All right, first thing I want to do is to patch the hole in the wall there. For these small holes, we're using paper drywall tape embedded into joint compound to bridge the gap. For larger holes, you'll need to cut out the damaged area by tracing around it with something square, like this coaster, to create clean lines that can be cut through with a utility knife. After you remove the damaged drywall, take a small piece of new drywall from the home center and turn it face down so you can trace the same square on the brown paper backing. Position it two inches away from the edges in one corner and draw two more straight lines the same distance away on the other two sides. Score those outer lines with a knife so that the drywall snaps cleanly and slice the paper on the other side to finish the cut. Now you have an 8 inch square of drywall with a 4 inch square drawn in the center. Extend each side of the smaller square with a ruler and score it along with the knife. 
When all four lines are scored, snap them one at a time. But this time, don't cut the paper facing. Simply peel away the backing and the gypsum core to leave the face paper. The result is a four inch drywall square with an attached two inch paper border. After you apply the joint compound around the hole in the wall, you can press the repair piece into position, then use a drywall knife to press the border into the joint compound, squeezing out all the excess. From here, the process is the same as the repair in Christine's wall. Look how easy that is. Yeah, see how it is? I had no idea. Uh -huh. And you just kind of, it's kind of like you put some on and then you wipe it down kind of tight like that. What an easy repair. So, now we will have to put another coat on it. Okay. There you go. All right, looks great. <laughs> When nailing up wood trim, it's really important to drill pilot holes first before nailing. Otherwise, the nails might split the wood, especially when nailing near the end or edge of the trim. But rather than using a drill bit, because a tiny drill bit like this would snap off very frequently and you can run out of drill bits quickly, I'm using one of the nails, one of the finishing nails, as a drill bit. I took the nail and I snipped off the head using a pair of pliers, then I chucked it into the drill. It's important to snip off the head so you get a nice tight fit around the jaws of the chuck. Now I'm going to use it the nail to drill the pilot hole. It takes a little longer than a regular drill bit, but if you use nice, even pressure, you see that? It goes right through. Isn't that great? And it's just the nail, and you can, you're never gonna run out of nails. You got unlimited, unlimited supply. So it's great to use the nail instead of the drill bit. And then, you simply drive in the nail. This is the perfect size pilot hole, and because you drilled it first, there's no fear of splitting the wood. We're helping Christine's family with some basic home repairs for their 60-year-old home. All right, let's see. It looks like they're done with their repairs, so we can get to work on the weather stripping over here. We're going to take this off with just some basic tools and then clean it up really well and then put some new weather stripping on. It is so lucky that you were able to save all of these pieces. I hope we have all of them. I hope so, too. Now, with all this damage your boys did around here, they should be here doing this work. I totally agree. <laughs> I think it was a football that went through the blind. Really? Throwing a football yes, inside? You allow in that? No, you allow that? You don't no, know? no. Oh, I wasn't here. You weren't here. Well, let's see if we can piece it all back together here. All right. Although the profile of these slats is somewhat complex, the joint on each end is a simple mortise and tenon. So, a little wood glue and some persuasion is all it takes. I don't know if it'll hold up against footballs, but it'll <laughs> normal situation. Should be any more footballs in the house. <laughs> I would have never figured out how to fix this. Well, let's don't get ahead of ourselves. We're not done. <laughs> We're not done yet. Yay! I'm excited. I can't wait to paint it now. All right, that's that's gonna be easy to paint. Yeah, I think a little sanding there, yeah. and then put the paint it's on. It's not gonna be easy to paint. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of paint. Aren't you about ready to put a coat of paint on that? Yeah, the old metal strip was covering up some raw wood, so I'm going to have to prime it first, but it should look good once I'm done. There you go, and get a coat of paint on tonight. Well, I'm going to see about this doorbell. Hopefully, it's nothing more than just the button. I'll just put the two wires together to test it. Ah! Ding dong, Danny's home. If the doorbell works, all you need is a button. I'm going to leave it off so that we can paint this too. That's it? That's okay. it. Doorbell. All right. Mm -mm. Now that Chelsea's completed all of the priming before she puts the final coat on, I want her to do some caulking around the perimeter of the door because it won't do any good at all for us to do all this weather stripping, install a new threshold, and still have air and moisture leaking around the perimeter of the door. And this whole thing here to caulk this and really lock it in is costing about five bucks. In this case, the trim is white, so ordinary white caulk works fine. But if you need to match caulk to a specific color on your home, you might consider Red Devil's Create a Color Caulk Kit. You simply remove the stopper on the back of the tube and add the appropriate color of latex paint. Then use the caulk mixer to combine the caulk and the paint. The syringe and mixer are included with the kit. Once the mixer is removed and the stopper replaced, it works just like any other caulk. The formula is mildew resistant, works for interior or exterior applications, and dries to match the paint color within 24 hours. Back at Christine's house, we start the second day by removing the old worn threshold. 
Hi, Danny. I see you took the threshold up. Are we getting ready to paint? Well, it's going to help a lot on the painting, but really we're replacing this for several reasons. First of all, it was sitting right on top. You can see that little line that the threshold was sitting on top of that. Mm -hmm. So taking it off will make it easier to get this up. It'll also make it easier to paint. But also, you can see that um, the, the rubber gasket's missing here. And the gasket is what really seals off. It's positioned directly under the door. And that's what keeps all of the cold air, hot air, out of, uh, okay. out of the house. While Chelsea and Christine paint the door jam, Lauren and I get started repairing the broken window pane. When I was looking at this before, when I was measuring for the glass pane, I noticed something on here. It's really strange because it just, it's flaking it off. It's like not foam. It's not the right stuff. So the first thing we need to do right. is we need to cut out all of this old material and get this glass out of there first. Once the broken glass is removed. There we go. All right. And the edges of the opening are clean. We apply a light coat of primer to the bare wood. This will protect the wood and help the glazing to stick better when it's dry. The new piece of glass was cut to fit this opening so it slips right into place before we prepare to install the glazier points. That's what really holds the glass in. Okay. So we're going to start right here. This is where you can really break a piece of glass. So you have that right there. All right. Then you just push it in and it holds it in place. Good deal. Now how quickly does this stuff typically harden? Overnight. You overnight. Yeah, you All always right. want to go at least overnight before you do any painting on it. That's when it really hit me. That is actually not paint holding the windows in place. That it is something besides paint. Uh, like kind of like this angle right here. Mm, turn it like right about there. You're okay. good. Now go all the way down. Just let, yeah. Now see that looks great. There you go. Look at look at that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Awesome. So that's all there is to it. You just take your time, and on any of these other pieces, you're just removing some of the loose glazing, and you're glazing over it just like we're doing here, and try to get it all to look like this looks right here. Gotcha, perfect okay. example. I'm over there all if you right. need me. Thank you, Danny. All righty. You know, a lot of people might be uncomfortable doing electrical projects, and hey, I get it. It can be daunting, and quite frankly, if you don't do it correctly, it could be quite dangerous. Well, one of the key things to an electrical uh, project is to make sure that that power is off before you start touching those wires. Well, how do you know? You need to get a voltage tester. And this is one right here by Commercial Electric. Now, this is actually a double-duty voltage tester because on this end is a voltage tester, and on this end is an outlet tester. But let me show you how it works as a voltage tester. I've got this extension cord plugged in, hold down that button, and when it detects power, you know that baby's hot. Now on this end, it will tell you what's going on with your outlet. So let's just say I were to plug this into the wall, a button illuminates, and for us right now, this we're in good shape because it's showing correct. But these other illuminate areas right here tell you what is exactly wrong with that outlet if there was something wrong. Now you can also plug this into a GFCI. When you do, just hold down this button and it'll also tell you what's wrong with that. So this is a great tool to have on hand before you start those electrical projects. We've already tackled a number of the small repairs needed on Christine's house, but one of the biggest will be this buckled laminate floor. You know, anytime you're removing a few pieces of an existing floor, it's always a bit of a challenge. Here, this is a plastic laminate floor that should be just floating over the existing floor, so it should come up pretty easy. In areas where there are two damaged pieces adjacent to each other, I can be pretty brutal pulling them apart because neither will have to be saved. That's a good thing because this old style of laminate is glued together. When the damaged pieces have to be freed from good pieces, the process is a little more delicate. Once the shoe mold in the corner is removed, I can clear the damaged pieces over to the wall. Because the seams are staggered, that still leaves some spots where a damaged piece is trapped between two good pieces. The solution is to use a saw set just deep enough to go through the flooring to cut down the middle of the damaged piece so each half can be pulled away from the good pieces on each side. That's a project Ted and I could have never tackled by ourselves. All right, there All you right. go. Bring it in. Bring We're it ready in. to piece it back together. Yeah. The first few pieces go in easy enough. Glue on both sides, tap them in place until the glue squeezes out. It's a little trickier where a new board has to slide between the two existing boards. Once you line up the tongue and groove on each side, 
you slowly tap it into position from the free end of the board. Now we're using a scrap from the old damage boards as a tap block to protect the edge of the new piece. It's slow, but eventually we fill the gap on the other end. There, you made the glue come out, we're good. <laughs> Finally, the last few small pieces are pried into position and I can begin installing the new threshold. It's kind of funny how your numbers weather differently than each other. No, why do you think that? I don't know, but I thought we would freshen them up a little bit. And you know, there's so many different ways you can do it. I thought you could either do black or I really like the brass. So what do you think about spray painting them a gold again? Oh, I think a gold would make it pop. Anytime dad is done with a project, he always flips his hammer or flips the screwdriver. And so I thought I would flip the spray can and I fell flat on my face, quite literally. You know, when you have missing slats in a shutter like this, it's a real eyesore. You can see it all the way from the street. Now, to replace this might be very hard to match the existing shutter, so then you would end up replacing all of the shutters on the front of the house. And you can't just go to the store and buy any of these slats, but with a piece of treated 2x4 and a table saw, I can make these slats in just minutes. First, I use our table saw to cut the board to the width of the existing slats. Then I adjust the fence to cut it to the proper thickness. To simplify matters, I'll paint them before I install them. While the paint is drying, we take a little break for a picture with Christine's sons who are home from school now. Right. See, we broke a window. Let's see, we broke some shutters there. Move the door. We broke a door inside. Hey, that one was you out right there. <laughs> they looked at him and they knew they were guilty. <laughs> <laughs> they knew it. I could tell it by the look on their face. Also reminded me of uh, when I was a little younger. Early the next morning, all the paint is dry, so Chelsea can show Lauren how to install the weather stripping before she mixes up some wet and forget for Christine's front porch. Okay, Christine, I know you're really frustrated because you power washed this not too long ago, and yes. it's already green and yucky again. Just to see that algae and um, the dirt come back so quickly, um, you feel defeated. You feel like you're not getting anywhere. But I have an easy solution for you. What we're going to do is it's not going to require any power washing. Don't get me wrong, I love using a power washer. The instant gratification is great. But you can also get a lot of satisfaction out of doing less work and getting the same results with something like Wet and Forget. It will take a little bit of time, but all we have to do is spray this solution on it and it'll take care of the green and the mold in your concrete. That's my kind of product. <laughs> Christine had mentioned to me that they had a break-in at the house a few years ago, and once that happens, it stays with you. But I think I have something to give them a little peace of mind. Uh, you probably noticed that we haven't put the doorbell on yet. Right. Because we got a little surprise that uh, Chelsea and I and you oh. are going to pull on your mom. So. That's right. Actually, we're going to install a video doorbell. What? Oh my gosh, that's cool. So thing. I noticed your mom is always on her phone, so don't you think it'd be cool That'd if she can perfect. monitor the doorbell from her phone? Yes. So having this app in her hand that can let her look out on the front porch and see what is going on at any time of the day is going to be really good for her. This system from Newtone is called the Knot and the doorbell camera unit installs in exactly the same place where the old doorbell was and connects to the same two wires that operated. Then it's just a matter of downloading the app on your phone and connecting the devices wirelessly. Um, we finished um, installing the doorbell Yay. and uh, she got a nice, oh, let's see, I'm getting an alert here. Let's see, what is this? Someone is at your front door, it says. Oh, I'm excited! Oh my Recognize God, I love them? it! Talk to him. Hey, girls. Uh -uh. Oh my goodness. This works anywhere you are, whether you're across the country, at work, or whatever, oh. and you will be able to talk to whoever's there, and we have it downloaded on your phone. It's called the Knock. Here's all the information you know? for it. So yes. we just thought a little upgrade there might be in, in order for you. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. That's wonderful. Oh, that's this is cool. Hey, I even got a hug out of it. Whether your home is old or new, you'll always have minor repairs to make, but I hope seeing some of these has helped simplify the process for you. Now that we have everything fixed and the house is looking really good, I think we're gonna take all the footballs, baseballs away. 
By replacing the missing wooden slats on the wood shutters and showing Lauren how to do a little window glazing, she's doing a pretty good job on that. And even spray painting the house numbers and the kick plate really improved the look of the front of the house. We also improved the efficiency of the house by installing a new threshold and weather stripping. And the foyer looks a lot better with the damaged floor replaced, the slats in the closet door repaired, and even the hole in the wall has disappeared. We even upgraded the doorbell from an old-fashioned one to a very modern doorbell and we did all of this for less than $300 in materials. Now there's a lot of things you can do, simple projects for very little money and you can go to our website and find out all about it. I'm Danny Lipford. Thanks so much for being with us here on Today's Homeowner. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.